Welcome back to the Snowpoint Cast. Today we have a versus episode um, in the Primal Clash to Guardians Rising format, also known as the 2017 Nats format, um, between Dram- Foxy Drampa and Patch City. Uh, so I'm going to be on the left playing Patch City, uh, and then Trevor Reed is going to be on the right playing uh, Foxy Drampa. I don't think this is a matchup that <clears throat> really got any main stage light, uh, just because Foxy Drampa wasn't really a deck that was super popular until kind of the end of uh this format and because of that you know patch city was pretty good it did well the first regionals um but then after that it didn't really have a ton of showing so they didn't really play against one another in any major tournament setting as far as i know um so i'm gonna start off with the lapras which is exactly what you want to start and then trevor uh, is going to start off with a Zerua. I get the manaphy start with a sycamore and i get a water in the discard as well so really decent start there if I can maybe find an Aqua Patch, an Energy Switch, and an Attach, might lead to the turn two. Um, I think it's Blizzard Burn, turn two uh, attack on the Lapras. Um, and I do hit that Attach off. Not sure if I hit the Aqua Patch. I do have an Ultra Ball in my hand, so I might just get um, a different Pokemon as well. I see a, an Olympia in there as well, so I might have an Olympia Retreat option um, if that opens up next turn. Trevor's hand's looking pretty good too. He's got. Couple double, uh, it's actually looking pretty bad, honestly. Like double colorless energy, two double colorless energy, a fighting and a rainbow, and a Zorark and two Sycamore. So he's gonna have to attach rainbow to the active and then just ditch all of that, which is really not what you want to see. I mean, two double colorless energy in this card. That's the that's the reason you play special charges because Professor Sycamore is such a um, important supporter for the deck, but still not amazing. And he does have another Zoro, so he's kind of I took out that uh, opportunity for me to bench him which is good at least and then he's gonna go for a moonless madness and uh confuse me which is actually pretty good honestly i mean forces me to hit a switch out i have olympia in my hand but um i still need to hit the energy and stuff to do that so i need uh, olympia uh energy attach e switch if i want to attack this turn with the lapras and i have a pseudo widow as well which i don't know if i love benching to be honest because versus uh foxy drampa you really have to control your bench um and you know yes it hurts him a little bit as well but i think the benefit for him have of me having an extra bench pokemon to do damage is probably better so not sure about that pseudo would bench to be honest but it's probably fine i'm gonna go for an ultra ball probably gonna go for another lapras here just so i can have uh, something to aqua punch onto if i get some um energy acceleration or max elixir off of the n uh so we'll see what I can get off this end. Hopefully some Excel, at least an attachment. If I miss either of those, that could be pretty bad. I could attach, I could attack this turn rather if I, you know, pop off a little bit. I need to hit a couple card combo, but it could absolutely happen. So we're going to go for that end and uh, shuffle hand back. Get Trevor to shuffle back too. <clears throat> I do need to hit some cards. I need at least a three card combo here to do anything. And my bench is already looking really full. That's something to really be mindful of when you're playing against Foxy Drampa is... Um, like any Zorak or Lycanroc deck just punishes you so bad for having a bench. Like it, as soon as Trevor is able to hit a Lycanroc now, if he doesn't KO me, then the Lycanroc's doing 200 with Dangerous Rogue, which is just like getting a free KO on a Lapras is really, really good in the matchup and something that you always love to see for sure. So kind of, uh, yeah, the Sudawood bench, I don't know about that, but we're going to see if we can get up this N. I do see an energy in there, so that at least the attach return is there. I'm gonna go for the retreat with the mana fee and probably just attach collect if I don't have um, much aqua tube providing a lot of uh, mobility for the deck just keeps you doing whatever you want. I'm just gonna go for a, a collect. I didn't really have much off that end. At least I hit the attach to hit the collect. I mean that's kind of the nice part about Lapras is if you don't really have anything going on, you can at least uh, collect for three, which is really good. So Zor or Trevor's gonna evolve into Zorak here. Bench of Rock Ruff and is another Zerua. So actually a really fine hand off of this um, end, and then he's probably gonna go for another research. Yep. Just going to be a secret for a research and uh, ditch the Oracorio, which is a pretty dead card in this matchup. And so this board's looking a little more set up now. Hit that Rock Ruff. That's all he really wanted. Maybe a Drampa here would be really clutch because then he can go um, hit for 20. Or no, he's just, yeah, he's just going to attach and attack. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, Float, floating a Drampa would have been maybe okay too, but this is super, super fine as well. Getting getting the first swing off here, especially with when I have such a sizable bench for 130 is... Uh, Really going to be an okay turn for Trevor. So he's going to Ultra Ball, discard a Brigitte and a Floatstone. Probably going to find another Zorark just to be able to stand in 
Um, an attack if you would like to next turn, depending on what he has in his hand. Maybe a grandpa. Yeah, Zork. That makes sense. Yeah, especially when I have such a full bench, you may as well attack with your one prize attackers. Um, if I am not able to KO this Zork this turn, then I might be in a bit of trouble just because Trevor's going to get so much value off of this single prize. Or even if I do return KO it, um, he's going to be taking two prizes with it next turn. So, like, if I don't kill it this turn, then he's just going to be getting so much value off of it, which might be problematic. And I do hit a max elixir there, so that's really clutch, actually. I'm able to get a max elixir. Now I just need the attach off, and then I can retreat, and then rough seas heal off this Lapras, which is actually really nice. That's kind of one of the nice things about um, playing rough seas in this deck, is you can take a hit, pivot, and then swing with another Lapras, which is kind of nice. And then I do have that choice bend as well. So just being ready for uh, anything that comes up, or an N. Trevor needs uh, a lot of cards to be able to hit me with a uh, Lycan Rock with Dangerous GX next turn, so um, I think dropping the Choice Band on there is pretty safe. So yeah, I don't have a lot of resources away, honestly. It's kind of nice when you're able to, uh, you know, it's my turn three that I'm hitting this um, Lapras, so just going to be able to swing for KO on turn three, and I have all my Aqua Patches left in deck, and three Elixir, Max Elixir, so... Leaves my late game looking pretty good. Probably going to go for an end here, but might go for... Oh, going to go for an Olympia, which I actually really like because then next turn I get to heal down again to 40, um, which means that the Zorork won't be killing me, which is actually really, really nice. Uh, 130, 40, yeah. So 130, 40 is 170, and so it forces him to hit a choice build if he wants to hit that with a boss KO. So he needs a lot of cards to be able to kill that um, with the Olympia. And I don't need anything else this turn. I have a, another supporter card in my hand and I'm attacking. So may as well hit that heal. And also it puts the Olympia in the discard, which uh, improves your late game uh, because you can VS Seeker for it, uh, whatever you'd like. So five to six prizes is going to take the first prize here off the Zork. Trevor's going to bench a Drampa. I think that's a floatstone on that Zorua. <clears throat> and then he's going to go for an N. Just gonna draw six. I'm gonna draw five. Still super fine, and I have water in my discard too. So like I have lots of outs, water, um, aqua patch, max elixir to hit some energy on this turn. There is a point where um, you can pivot into attacking with Tapu Lele as well to save your Lapras KOs for Drampas and Lycan Rocks, um, because Lapras with a choice band and a Kakui hits two ten, which can kill a Lycan Rock. So being able to only invest a Lele one, they kill it. So, you know, it's off the bench, which is nice. And then also, um, you know, if you're able to hit three energy and Zorik has two, it has 100 HP, so you can kill it with the Tapu Lele, which is actually much better than investing in a Lapras because Lapras is your big cannon attacker that you kind of want to save for their GX Pokemon if you can. So, Trevor hit the DC off this, so he's at least going to be attacking me this turn. Not sure with what, though. Probably with the Zorik, but still, it's not even amazing, to be honest. I can put the Drampa if he has another Zork and he can stand in KO. He does have the Zork break as well, so he could, if he has choice built. So he's going to go for the break evolution. If he has choice built, he can kill here. Um, I don't know if he hit the choice belt though. He did hit the dark, but he might just stand in swing for 160, which is still really, really good. It's a lot of damage pressure on the board and forces me to switch out. Um, and he did miss that choice band, unfortunately. He really would have liked to hit that, but... Yeah, the hand's not looking great here for Trevor. He's just going to go for a pass, which, yeah, not amazing. I'm just going to go for an attach on this Lapras and uh, go for a max elixir. Three, four, five, last one. Miss. That's okay. Can't win them all. Yeah, I think not attacking here from Trevor is actually much better. Wait until you can hit the hit the choice band or, or do something. Like, yeah, if, if you lose that Zorik, that's pretty bad because with the rough seas, you just don't have... Oh, hmm. I go for the uh, the big wheel here, honestly, because his hand's so bad. Which it's pretty bad if you big wheel here. You probably lose if you big wheel here. He needs to top deck a supporter. He's got Zork break DC, um, special charge. Smart of him not to play the special charge. Most players would just you know, oh, I have two DC in my discard. I want to get them back. I have three in my disc. Or no, he only has two, um, because he ditched him with a sycamore. But most players would be like, ah, oh, I need to put these back because I need to draw them. But Trevor wisely knowing that he is kind of bricking right now um that just lowers your odds of drawing or top decking out of this brick so he's just holding it for now and keeping them in the discard even though it seems like they'd be good in the deck it's actually worse because you don't want to draw them so he's promoting the zarua <laughs> oh. 
got the DC. Might go for a big wheel here. Honestly, he's going for the attach on the draft, but it might be a big wheel. And he did top deck the Sycamore, which is actually really, really good. And he has the multi switch as well. So might go for the swing for 80. Actually being able to um swing into this other Lapras. Uh with that has damage on it is really good. You know, I I'm not 100% sure about this because he has his orc break with the dark. I don't know about this play because it guarantees that he gets KO. At the same time, I wanted to save my choice band. So maybe I was like, I, I had no idea he was bricking and he, he used to support a last turn and then top deck out of it. So there's no way I would have known that. But I, still, keeping the one with the choice band on it, it probably would have been correct, even though keeping the choice band on the bench is good as well because I get to already have that if he decides to promote the Drampa later. So, yeah. He's in a pretty fine position after the Sycamore, honestly. He doesn't really um, have anything else that he really needs. He's going to be able to kill me here and take two prizes, get back in the game. I did take two prizes already, so if he's not able to keep up the pace, then... That's going to be a little bit too much. Uh, Lapras is one of those decks that if you're not able to keep up with the pace, it can just steamroll you, especially with Rough Seas Manaphy. If, you get, if I get another Lapras into late game, then I'm just like rotating around and healing 90 damage um, before Lapras becomes active again. So that's just like way too much to give your opponent. So good of him to be able to keep the pressure on and take some prizes here. He's going to go for an Ultra Ball for a Lycan Rock GX, I believe. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's Lycan Rock. He must have a rock rough in his hand. Or maybe he's just thinning. He could just be thinning as well. Yeah, no, he has a Lycan Rock in his hand. So he's kind of just saying, you know, have the N or I'm going to have Lycan Rock next turn, which don't super know about that play either just because holding it is fine. And you have to discard the Tapu Lele, which if I do N makes your uh, game a little bit less consistent there. I guess he has another one, but... Got double lichen rock. Interesting. So I'm gonna go for an attach on this Lele. When just knowing that there might be a turn that I have uh to use Tapu Lele this this game later. Like I said, it was a, it's a pretty good attacker, so knowing that you have an out to it is pretty good. And yeah, I'm gonna shame some cards and then Max Elixir into a, another whiff, I believe. It, or that was the one on the Lele. I wasn't 100% paying attention, to be honest. I guess we'll see if I attach here. Now we're going to go Choice Band on the Tapu Lele. It's kind of setting up for a KO later. Um, you don't have double colorless energy in the deck, but you do have energy switch, so you can get some kind of big surprise KO. Some of the numbers that matter are... Um, four energy, if you have four energy and they have three, then you're doing 140 plus a um, choice band is uh, 170, which kills a Lele, or put a Kakui on there as well, and then that hits 190, which can kill a Drampa, which is kind of nice. So he's going to go Rainbow on the Rock Rough. Oh. I don't think he has the multi switch. I think he ditched the multi switch with the uh, Sycamore, so that would have been really nice to hit, honestly. He's going to discard Lysander and a um, Lycan Rock GX. Get rid of some of his um, drag up bench options for another Rock Ruff. I really like this. I think that plays super fine. Just being able to have some more access into the late game. Probably going to go for a. Uh, okay. For an N. He's going to grab an N with the VS Seeker. Yeah. Grabbing an N. Just shuffling his hand in. And he just doesn't want to evolve into the Lycan Rock yet because he knows that if I do have um, some cards in my hand, I can just swing into it before it swings into me, which is pretty good. Like if I swing into it with the Tepu Lele, for example, for if I had two, one, two, three, nine, hit it for 90 first, it's pretty bad because even if you kill the Tepu Lele, that's not really the threat. So it's kind of another nice part about attacking with Tepu Lele is your opponent doesn't really want to kill it they do because you know it's worth two prizes but also it's not the the thing that's going to be really killing them later into the game 
Looks like I hit a, at least a Glaceon off that hand. Pretty, uh, could be okay in this matchup, actually. If I'm able to take the Dramp out, Glaceon could be good. The thing is, is you have so much power that you usually don't need to use Glaceon in this matchup. That's more for uh, Vespa Quinn. But it can be really good against Lycanroc and Zora because they are evolution Pokemon. So I'm going to go for a Wonder Tag. Yeah, I'm just going to go for research, just draw some more cards. I kind of just need to set up some more. I don't love having such a full bench here. I guess it's kind of, you you get reach a point where you're like, well, there's there's no return. I'm already, I already have four. Four is kind of the point of no return. If you've benched four Pokemon, you may as well go in for five because, um, you know, you're, you're going to be get, getting KO'd no matter what with a dangerous rogue and likely so with a Zorark as well. Especially in this position, you know, I don't mind benching the fifth because I'm, going to be killing the Zerua, so I'm not in any real big threat of um, being Zorak next turn. That could be really bad if you had another Zerua, then it could go like DCE, Choice Band, KO, and that could really swing the tide, but since I know I'm killing the Zerua, then I think in this situation, going for the fifth bench is fine. Let me go for uh, Aqua Patch, Energy Switch, and then this is the play that I was mentioning before, where it's really nice to just be able to keep my Lapras um, not attacking, so I get to use that attack next turn without a switch, and then also um, you know, hit him, hit him with the Lele just for 60. And he does hit that Lycanroc as well, so he's just going to bring it up. And then I'm going to get blown up with a Dangerous Rogue, which makes a lot of sense. Trevor recognizing the threat in the Lapras that I have tried to protect by keeping it on the bench, and he's just going to be able to bring it up in Dangerous Rogue. He's going to touch a Choice Belt to the Drampa and also bench an Oranguru, draw some cards here. That's pretty good. Might go for the Kukui? Probably not, though. Probably just holding it for next turn. <clears throat> Kind of nice part about the rainbow on this uh, Lycan Rock too is um, if he's able to find a way to retreat it, then uh, he gets that dr damage for Drampa, which can be really good. He just gets to kill the Tapu Lele for free, um, which would win in the game. So this is coming down right down to the wire. We're two prizes apiece here. See if I can pop off a little bit. I do have a lot of resources left in deck because I kind of manually set up my first couple Lapras. So a little later into the game means I don't really have to worry about finding stuff i'm just gonna feel blower to thin not a really big threat but kind of nice getting that off there as well i'm um, just meaning that trevor can't just hit us uh energy to ko here all he would have needed was an energy to kill this type of Lele, so that's pretty bad and just feel blowing that to make him hit one more card is pretty good gonna go for the manual attach onto the lapras doesn't look like it hit really any other cards that i wanted here i mean i'm gonna ditch an articuno and an ultra ball with an ultra ball find some stuff i see two aqua patches right at the bottom of the deck there not really where you want to see them but that's okay i think this is still really fine you know having a having a ko or having a attack with this type of lele just means that i have to boss kill the lie uh like and rock for game which is pretty possible trevor needs to hit energy and another choice band um or the kukui actually he has kukui in his hand as well so if he's able to go um energy I don't know if he has the energy. I don't remember if he had the energy in hand, but he already has the Gukui, so this actually might be able to seal the game for him if he has another energy. Um, so we'll see what he can draw off this. He does have the energy. Oh, he's got everything he needs. He just wins the game here. So he's going to go for a retreat. Since there's damage counters on this Lycanroc GX, he gets to attach, use Berserk uh, for 150, and then with a choice built is 180 and a Kukui, 200 for the game. Trevor takes it there. All right, well, uh, I'll leave deck profiles to um, both of these decks in the description if you're interested a bit more about the decks. And if you have any questions about the matchup or either decks, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below, and I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, and as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time.